Let's say that you have a Nuke script that started to grow and get a little bit slow, but you can't figure out exactly which nodes are leading to the slowness. You can use what's called performance profiling uh, in Nuke, and you can either write the output to an XML file, or you can see it right inside the node graph of Nuke itself. It's very handy. So let's uh, load up this script that we want to profile. So we're going to launch Nuke with the dash P, big P, and then we'll load up the script that was giving us trouble. You can also launch it from the script editor using this command, start performance timers, in a, an already running session of Nuke. And you'll see now that Nuke is running the performance profiling, it prints little information on each node about how many uh, milliseconds of CPU time and wall time it's using. And it also has colored the nodes that are sort of the, the slow nodes, the really worst nodes that it can find. So we can already spot right here that every grain and bilateral are our problem children here. I'm going to view it down at the bottom here to force them all to evaluate. Alrighty. So we have all of our performance profiling information here. We can kind of get a sense of how many milliseconds each node took to run. So yeah, obviously, uh, it seems that uh, the only real heavy nodes here are the bilateral, which took hundreds of thousands of milliseconds to run, so several seconds here to run, and F free grain. That's great. What can we do about that? Because now that we've identified the slow nodes, I mean, aside from them maybe having really bad settings in them that we could adjust, but the assumption would be you adjusted it to make it look the way you needed it to look. So there's not a whole lot you can do to make it go faster if that's the setting that you need. Well, there's a really cool trick you can do in Nuke. Now that we know how to render from the command line, we can essentially disable the nodes only in our interactive sessions here. So, I mean, you could do that manually. You could always disable this node, these nodes while you were working, the slow ones here, and then speed up your comp. But then obviously, what if you forget to re-enable them when it's time to render? Uh, that could be a real problem. So there's a trick you can do where you can exp put an expression in them that will enable and disable them automatically in the graphical sessions. So it will disable it in the graphical set session, but enable it when you render from the command line. So I'm going to add an expression to this, and the expression I'm going to put in here is dollar sign GUI. And GUI is a variable that is set whether Nuke is in graphical mode or not. So it automatically sets this variable internally, and when it's in graphical mode, it returns one. And when it's not in graphical mode, it returns zero. So when a checkbox is turned on, that means one or true. And when it's turned off, that means zero. So now that expression will turn this node off only when we're in GUI mode, but when we're not in GUI mode, it will allow it to be turned on again. So let's go ahead and do our F regrain here also. And we'll save out our script as a new version. So let's kick off this render from a shell. I've already prepared a shell here. We want to type nuke x and then the frame range that we want to render, which in this case, it's only one frame. We'll just render frame one. And then interactive license we have to pull. We want to execute this script here, which is slow comp. And there we have it. There's our Marcy with our 
F free grain, which has run, and our bilateral filter, which has done all its work. So it worked. So hopefully you can get some mileage out of that tip as well. It's uh, really great when you have a render farm, obviously, but if you intend to render from the command line as well, it's functionally identical, so it will still give you the same benefit.